Good evening, guys, and welcome back to the GEST IDC. This is your winner bracket, the only bracket, your main bracket, single elimination bracket, semi final match number one. We have got your returning champions, Pacific Emacs, last month known as Pacific Bad Burn. Now, Pacific Emacs, they are playing here in one of your semi finals, looking to defend their titles and facing them down. Up against them is a team no one had heard of. Until about a month ago, SVRES, the Dark Horses from Cambodia, a team who came through in the Cambodian wildcard position last last month. We had a specific Cambodia qualifier where the winning team got straight into the GESC IDC. They won it. They came in and they caused some upsets. They beat a few top teams, made it into the playoffs. Didn't really go too far in the playoffs, but they made it in. This month's in, they didn't. we didn't actually have a spot allocated to one team from Cambodia. There was an opportunity for a team to get in, but they had to compete with the other countries during the qualifiers. They beat the teams from the Philippines, Thailand as well, those teams in the qualifiers to get on in this month and make it into GSDIDC. Not only did they get in, they won their group. They were the top team finishing in their group. They are now in the playoffs. They are now in the semifinals. And facing them is the returning champion. So what do you do from here? We're going to have to see SVRES over on the Sentinel side with the first pick looking to cause an upset here, I have to say. I mean, they're up against the returning champions. This is not a match they're expected to win, but by no means would it be a massive surprise if they did win it. They've shown already they're capable of causing some upsets, and we'll see if they are going to be able to do it here. This is going to be a Nagasaran Earthshaker winner and a ban for them so far. We're going to see Pacific Emacs Bad Burn banning out the Chen Prophet as well as Lycanthrope. So banning out some of those strong pushing heroes. And SVRES go for the first pick Rubik. So we'll see them go for that versatile. Either support or solar here, but just something which is so annoying to verse. Uh, he can always steal any of those spells. And speaking of stealing spells, well, Pacific still a hero that Rubik loves to steal one of this, his spells, Morphling. But it's a hero that Pacific Emacs use oh so damn freaking well. Morphling going to be going straight into the hands of Bayabas, the Guava, the Guava man. Where is he? There he is on the gray spot. We're going to see him playing that Morphling, I imagine. Almost always him on it. They pick up the Dragon Nut as well, likely to be their solar mid here. So we see the DK at mid using that Bottle Crow. We'll see Morphling being played in a tri lane, looking to get that farm up, looking to have the carry impact that he does often have. And then we have SVRES. No second thoughts. Templar Assassin right off the bat. So there's your minus armor. There's your burst damage. And that's what you need to take to the Morphling. You need instant damage so he can't morph to strength. Morph to strength isn't sort of insta HP. It's gradual HP gain. But if you have a hero like Templar Assassin who can take heroes down really quickly, especially with a couple added nukes and burst fire from some supports. They want to get some supports which have those nukes. I mean, throw in a fissure. Throw in a power shot or something, but with that said, we're being banned. But throw in some other heroes with spam. You've got the Rubik Fade Bolt, so there's already some additional spam there. But they've got a lot of burst damage, and that's what you need to kill a Morphling. Not to mention Templar Assassin, a great hero to take down a DK with. You've got high damage, you've got minus armor, and that's where you, that's the only way you can really make that DK actually killable, especially when he's with BKB later on. He can't nuke him down. You need the minus armor. You need the physical damage. Templar Assassin offers that. They pick up the Enchantress as well in the third pick. So, I mean, you can see maybe why that Emacs wanted to ban out those pushing heroes. They know that SVAES like to push, like to pressure towns, and Enchantress is a great hero to do that with. Although it may not be quite the same, fit into the same category as some of those other ones. As uh, Just getting asked about the other match. All right, just letting the uh, iZone know that they're going to have to wait for their other match to finish. The iZone semi, the other semi-final guys, uh, we'll quickly mention that is going to be iZone up against the winner of Neolution Esports and Pacific Palette. So Pacific have two teams left in the tournament, two teams that could be in separate semi-finals and that could both make the final. So we could see an all Pacific Grand Final. But iZone Gigabyte, I mean, they're a team just known for making it to the Grand Finals. They've had three Grand Finals placings, all second place finishes, but they are a very solid team. But we're going to focus on this semi-final. We may actually finish in time to stream both semi-finals, because the other match is going to be delayed, which is why we're streaming this one. We have got a Puck being banned, as well as a Chaos Knight with the fourth bands. Puck's seen a lot of play. It's been picked up quite frequently, and SVRES, these two bands... Both targeted at the side lane solos. They ban up both the Puck and the Queen of Pain, two heroes which will be a side lane solo, and Pacific Emacs yet to pick up one of those. We've seen Puck's 
go into that suicide lane. Same goes for the Queen of Pain. And if they're up against the trial lane, what do they do is they go into the neutrals. They find a spot. They can hide in here and kill this neutral camp. They can go up to here and kill this neutral camp. They can go up to here and kill this neutral camp. You can always find somewhere to farm. If your lane's too hard, if you're up against the trial lane, they go into the neutrals. And what we actually saw in the game between Invasion Red and uh, Pacific is Puck using this spot here. Puck came in here and started killing Ancients. He got found, but it is a possible spot. There's so many different spots you can use as a Puck or as a Queen of Pain with the Orb and the Queen of, and the Blink to get into these spots where you can't be reached and damaged to actually neutral farm if you have a tough lane. So if you're up against a trial lane, there's always somewhere to go, which is why SVRES ban off both those two heroes. They're great side lane solos for that very reason. Pacific Emacs banning out more pushing heroes. They ban out the Shadow Shaman, and we're going to see what options they go for. They want some sort of disable here. Maybe something like an Earthshaker. Maybe a Sand King. Something to give them some, some sort of AoE stun to combo with the Rubik. And to set up the lockdown that Templar Assassin needs to actually kill heroes. If you don't have the lockdown, you're maybe not going to be able to get those kills. So we'll see how SVRES wants to do this. And... Uh... And then we'll see what happens with these fourth picks. It's SVRES who do have the first uh, choice for their fourth pick. They probably want to go for one of those disabling heroes. They could always play Rubik as a support. Rubik and Enchantress could be their two supports. I think that would be quite a viable option if they really want. And then they can pick up some strong solo heroes. I mean, they've banned out a few themselves, but there's plenty left in the pool. As far as solo heroes go, there's always more options for you. And we'll see where they want to go with these last couple of picks here. They want some sort of tanky, survivable heroes, uh, but a lot of those have been taken already. I mean, you can see Chaos Knight being banned, DK being picked up already. You're looking at heroes like Slada, Tidehunter, even Sanking to a lesser extent can fill in that role, and uh, we'll see where they want to go. Apparently, oh man, apparently Pacific and Near Lucian are having an, a crazy, crazy epic game. But right now, it's going to be a Crystal Maiden pickup for SVR, so they're just going to go for their, their support option. They're going to hide what they're going to, what's going to be their carry hero. They pick up the CM. There's your CM Enchantress as your two supports. Rubik going to be a solo hero. Same goes for Templar Assassin, and the carry is going to come last. They need something to do with the Morphling, and they're now up against the Dark Series. Well, what a great side lane solo that is. Of course, it's the Life Stealer. We saw this yesterday. SVR EES once again going to pull up the Life Stealer. Oh, I've just been told. Neolution Esports actually beat Pacific. So it's going to be Neolution versus... Sorry, beat, yeah, beat Pacific. So it's going to be Neolution versus iZone in your other semi-final. So we're going to have one Filipino team in each semi-final and one non-Filipino team. So the non-Filipino teams pulling up some upsets, having some great results here. But live still the pickup. This we saw yesterday. For those of you who tuned in yesterday, SVR ES up against MSI Evolution Gaming Team. They had a life stealer. He went, I mean, he basically free farmed and he got a Mask of Madness Basher combo after his armlet. He went, I think, armlet, Mask of Madness, and then Basher. And he was just using Mask of Madness and just bashing people to death. It was absolutely insane. We'll see if that happens again, if that is going to be a build life stealer goes for. He's going to have the support of the Crystal Man. He's going to have this Enchantress in the jungle coming out to support him as well. He's going to have a pretty easy time farming at this bottom lane, I feel. As uh, it is going to be a solo darks here. Anyways, guys, we're going to introduce our two teams over on the Scourge team. Representing the Philippines, your returning champions. We have got Pacific Emacs, formerly known as Bad Burn. We have got representing them, Chen on the Morphling. NMA playing on the Shadow Demon. Oh, whoop. Quickly do the latency. I'm getting yelled at by the teams. I... I'm going to quickly say, I freaking hate commentating when you have to do all this stuff for the teams as well. You should be able to just commentate and focus on the game. But I've got to reach out. I've got to do all this other stuff as well, which makes it such a freaking pain. I've got to save the game. Who wants to save when I want to talk to you guys and be exciting? Anyways, guys, introducing your two teams. Back to that. Rant is over. We've got NMAE playing the Shadow Team. We've got Don on the Sand King. We have got Chen actually on the Morphling. It's going to be by a bus playing the Dragon Knight, the Guava. We've got the Darks here being played by Hug. He is the one on that side lane solo. And then over on the central side, introducing the guys from Cambodia, the guys that no one had heard of until about a month ago, SVR ES. We've got 520 playing the Enchanted. We've got Bravo playing the Crystal Maiden. Templar Assassin in the hands of EE. -E. We have got Rubik in the hands of B. And finally, on the life still, we've got Nat Cam. Once again, we saw it yesterday. Nakes being played by Nat Cam. And he absolutely tore up 
MSI Evolution Gaming Team with his Mask of Madness, Basher, and Armlet build yesterday. Will he go for a similar build today? Will he even get some support? It looks like Seaman and Enchantress maybe going to be heading up top. Maybe going to be looking to apply pressure to Morphling. They're currently going to be running into an Invis Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon who is still lurking around this mid lane. There's three heroes mid. They're going to be going in looking for a kill. Sanking, can he get this done? No, he can't. He backs off, but Shadow Demon could go in for the Banish. Shadow Demon decides against it. I'm... There could have been an opening there. I think he's trying to bait, bait Rubik down the lane, but it looks like they're not going to take the bait. And that means it gives Enchantress CM to get a chance to get themselves established at top lane, provide some harass and pressure onto this Morphling. So we'll see if they can manage to do so. And it's going to be Lifesteal, a 1v1 against the Darks here. And this is okay. He can go for that feast, and then he's got the HP region. I mean, he gets the survivability he needs to stay in this lane just from that lifesteal. I mean, Darkseid can only harass him so much. He can pop the Rage and then the Iron Stall shop stops doing damage. We'll see how he does cope against the Darkseid. Right now, just trading hits a bit, lifestealing where possible. He wants to try to bring the Darkseid back into his tower. He's actually going to pop the Wounds, force out the Surge, and then get a couple last hits for himself. So nice play so far from him. Enchantress CM. Oh, they run right into the Shadow Demon. They're not going to be able to latch on by the looks of things. They've got a double creep here. They're actually going to skip this wave, I think. They've got the Centaur, in, Centaur and Troll combo. This is the Ensnare into a stun. Probably one of the strongest combos. We'll see if they can land it up. CM is looking for that fr Frost Bite or Frost Nova, depending what she got at level 1. Probably going to be that Frost Nova. But uh, right now they are going to back things off. And uh, it is going to be just killing up the creep wave. But that's farm and XP, not going to Templar Assassin, but it is pressure onto this tower at top. Makes it harder for Morphling to farm under his tower. And they're just going to be picking up a few more creeps now by the looks of things. Getting an Ursa as well. Look at this trio of creeps. That's a scary looking combo, even if the Dark Troll is about to expire. Bottom lane. They're still trading blows a bit. A couple Tangos being used, or actually three Tangos being used so far by Darkseid. Two by the Life Stealer. Fairly even so far as they are going to go in towards that middle lane. Centaur is not going to be lasting all that much longer, but DK needs to be careful. He is low. He's going to try bring out his bottle soon, but he needs to be, he wants it to be with Flying Cree. If he brings it as a land Cree, it could actually get sniped out here. Enchantress going in from behind does get spotted by the tower. And DK is going to run down and avoid it by the looks of things. He should be okay here. As yet, he will go down through the bottom river. Avoids the gank. And Shadow Demon is there. Scouting them out as well. So CM Enchantress, Shadow Demon. Looking for the DK. Not going to find it. Great play so far from the DK. Maneuvering around. Not getting caught out. Not getting killed. Bottom lane, we see 12 CS on the Nakes. Doing so well so far. Morphling only with 9 CS. He's been put under pressure with the wave under his tower. 10 CS on Tempo Assassin. This is what happens. It's been a 1v1 matchup. The supports haven't been up top. The supports have been at mid lane protecting the DK. And Morphling has sort of been left to fend for himself against a Tempo Assassin who has better damage. Has the refraction. Has the meld. And has more options to farm at this top lane. So currently it is Morphling not being farming all that well. Mid lane though, as a result, DK up to 13 CS, thanks to a bit of support, and Enchantress yet to find enemy kills. CM and Enchantress so far being ineffective, they're both about level 3 though, so they've managed to get some decent farm, and they're going to look to buy pressure at bottom. I think they realise, okay, top lane and mid lane are playing safe, not only are they playing safe and watching out for the Enchantress gang, Shadow Demon is there to back them up often. The defensive disruption can be used, they're going to try decide that, okay, let's just go for bottom, let's try and get some kills on this Darks here, or at least try and push and pressure this tower. Uh, Enchantress is going to hit level 3 fairly soon, as I will see. Crystal Main actually stacking this neutral camp. Nice plays by the Crystal Main. She can then use that pull to her advantage. So we'll see Enchantress pick up a big wild can here. Top lane. DD Rune actually found by Shadow Demon. Refraction being popped by Templar Assassin just to get back towards top. And now we have your tri lane. So there's going to be a tri lane at top. Now they can push the Templar Assassin back. Now they can get Morphling this free farm that they want. As uh, at the moment, though, it looks like they won't be able to do all that. Well, something someone just pointed out in chat, which I had to check out. Two Magic Six on DK. This is going to be a mistake, I'm pretty sure. He doesn't want to actually have two Magic Six here. There isn't really much reason to do so. You don't get double charges for it. You can, of course, stack them both up, but you only really want to have one Magic Six. I imagine one was a mis mistake. So there we go. He's going to sell it, actually. Bit of a misclick by the looks of things. And uh, we will see how things progress in these two side lanes as well. Tempo Assassin playing more cautiously, knowing those supports are nearby. They haven't actually got sentry wards by the looks of things, so Tempo Assassin can always just go into melt and hide. But of course, that is a thing where you, we, you don't really want to do that. <laughs> you want to be out there competing for last hits. And oh, look at this. Life Stealer find some, uh, finds a golem, finds a Centaur Warchief, some big gold that can be picked up there as well as XP. He's going to salve up as well now. 
Dark Seer, only level 4, about to level 5, but Life Seal's already got their level 6, so really nice farm efficiency coming out from SVR ES. They've got levels all over, their supports, their solos, they're looking good, they're getting decent farm. Rubik at mid-20 CS, even, even with the DK, but that has hit the level 6 now, can feel that Breath of Fire and get himself some more spam. There we go, he steals the Breath of Fire level 3 and can spam that right back at the DK. We'll look at top lane, the support, level 3 Sanking. Level 2 Shadow Demon, so slightly, slight level advantage to the Sentinel side with the CM, I believe, level 3. Yeah, both these supports level 3, so there's about a 1 level advantage on the supports for the Sentinel side. The Solos, they're doing pretty much even. Slight level advantage, as we saw, to the Rubik at mid. He did get level 6 before the DK, but it's fairly even. It's only a marginal lead for SVR ES right now. Neither team pulling away completely, but uh, it is a fairly even match up for the most part. But it is going to be Pacific Emax, who want to apply the pressure first. They're doing so at top lane. They're getting this wave under town, and they're going to look for an opening on Templar Assassin. Disruption into a sun, into a waveform, and there we go. They've got the Sentry Wards. That's what you need to actually get those kills, and I believe Templar Assassin will have spotted that. Has had plenty of time to click this Shadow Demon and knows that, but there's a rotation. They're looking. They're expecting a dive on T8. Well, they're going to be there ready with creeps as well as the CM kick. And look at this Sand King taking a lot of damage. Central Stun going to be spot on. Is there any more damage? The Central Stun's going to be a cool and He can sit in Sandstorm if he wants. He gets Frostbitten. First Blood. Bravo. The CM pretty much all on his own. The solo kill with the help of the Sentinel. And here comes the Rubik. The TP in. SVR, yes. Striking once. Striking twice. Getting both support here. Shadow Demon and Sand King both going down. At top lane, two kills going their way. It did take a Rubik TP, but a well worthwhile TP from Rubik. And he is going to have to get back to mid lane to help protect his tower, though, from this DK who's popped the level 1 ultimate. But so far, he's kept his tower plenty of HP, and he's going to be A-OK -okay at mid lane. He's got the bottle crow action. He's got the double courier. Even the Cambodians running with the double courier. He needs to get in there, start spamming this nuke, though. The tower is getting chipped away at, although DK, a bit scared for his own life, is going to head down towards this bottom river. Maybe let's see if there's a rune there, although I think it did spawn at six minutes. Top lane, they're going in on Morphling. Morphling out of mana. Have they got any more disables on mana throwing him? It doesn't look like they do. See him out of mana. Bad burn. The champions down 2-0 very early, very fast. And as far as farm goes, well, they're not really winning at bottom lane. Nakes at 41 CS. S what am I talking about? DS Darks here. 37, 39 now. He's on par with Life Seal, but the thing is, it's a 1v1 matchup. Life Seal is actually doing perfectly fine against the Darks here. So we'll see both those heroes getting big farm. And now SVRES pressuring the top tier on tower. They've got the Enchantress. They've got the Centaur that's been stolen. And they're actually, look at this. They pull the creep wave to the Ogre Mauler. I'm not sure if that was intended or not. Either way, it's going to maybe get them this tier 1 tower. The creep wave is now here. The TP is going to come in, prevent the tower from going down, at least for now. Morphling has his Ring of Aquila, but really sharp play all around from SVR ES. As we'll see, Pacific Bad Burn in a bit of trouble here. Another Centaur coming in from the Enchantress, looking for the Sand King. Sentry Ward, de-warding behind the tower. Going to make sure they can't get use that vision for themselves, but they get the kill. It's on Shadow Demon. I, for a second there, I forgot about the Shadow Demon still coming in, and he goes down. Templar Assassin picking it up. Level 6. No wonder the traps are there. The traps with the slow, and that's an easy kill on a Shadow Demon. We're going to have a quick save. Save. Save, save, save. Uh-oh. What am I missing? What am I missing? Bottom lane. Are they trading hits, or is this actually going to be a kill? They're just trading hits. He pops the rage and Darkseer walks away, maybe surges himself away. Nothing too major. And now we're going to have Templar Assassin coming back in. Just throws the traps. He's got plenty of mana to use. He's got his bottle. He's got the Bassy Ring from the Enchantress and he is looking to be okay. But Cambodia, SVRES up three kills to zero. Oh man. As uh, we are going to see them pushing, pressuring this top lane. DK at mid though, finding an empty lane, this is a tower, there's nothing there to defend it, the TP coming in now, the tower will go down, DK will he get, yes he will, he gets the stun off, he needs one more right click, he does, smart play from him, he needs to be careful, he doesn't go down now, a waveform has been stolen, that is not his belly one to get stolen, but he did have a big charge on his magic one, it does have enough HP to survive, and he's going to bring his bottle back out to heal himself up, send it back again, and continue just spamming that bottle, harass and his bottle spam just to keep himself healed up, keep himself mined up. And Bad Burn, they're making the best of this bad situation at top lane. They're winning this mid lane. They get the T1 tower and now they're going to see DK continue to farm. DK who is getting closer and closer to a Lothar's edge. He's already got his quarter stuff and uh, we'll see him starting to build the other pieces and get the Lothar's as fast as possible. But bottom lane, 
This is the hero who can maybe out carry a DK. Life still at 59 creeps. DK 52, but DK does have the tower, so he's going to have a slight farm advantage, at least for the time being. Sand King just trying to use his sandstorm, trying to keep this top tower alive. We'll see how long that does la last. If Enchant is going to pick up another sandstorm, you can always stun him in that sandstorm. And Rubik is coming as well to the top lane. And you can use the telekinesis to stun him in there. So they've got options. They can stun him even in that sandstorm. And I think this top T1 tower may be going down soon. We may have to see a TP in from the DK to try to defend it. He hasn't got one right now. Shadow Demon neither. It's 4v2 at the top lane. None of these heroes having TPs on them. As uh, the Kree is coming back and forth from bottom lane. Darkseid doing some ball crawling of his own. He's got a Vanguard up. That's going to help give him survivability he needs to verse the Darkseid. But without DK coming top, this tower almost certain to drop. As we will see, can, is there an opening to use a telekinesis? Doesn't look, look like there is for Rubik, but they're going on Morphling. Morphling's got a wave. He gets mana burnt. He waves right into the CM. CM taking big damage here. Luckily, the telekinesis was right away. It was instant. Templar Assassin goes in. The big right click damage. Templar Assassin is uh, not going to get the Morphling. Meanwhile, Rubik takes a heap of damage. Luckily, Morphling was only doing about 20 to 30 damage a hit, but he's now doing even less. He's still Morphling Strength. He's on all strength, and he's got no HP left. And he waves out just in time. He's all agi, 150 HP. There was no more agility to convert, but he didn't go down. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Nakes, Rage, TP, going to survive as well. Another gank avoided. 3-0, still the court score. SVR ES, though, they do pick up a tier 1 tower. Bottom lane, Rubik's TP'd in. He's got the Fade Bolt. He's trying to spam it off, trying to keep his own tower alive. He's a bit low on HP. He wants to bring his crew out to try and start refilling his bottle up. And uh, he needs to start doing that soon. It's going to be the creep wave cleared out for now. We'll have another save asked from Bad Burn. That's what we are going to see. What is going on at mid lane? Is this a tier 2 tower for the DK? Am I, am I seeing this right? Did DK just get a tier 2 tower? While all that was going on top, I mean, there was an opportunity for the tower to go down. Yeah, DK got a second tier 2 tower by himself. That's going to be a really fast Lothars. And by really fast, I mean an 11 and a half minute Lothars. Wow. Boots, wand, bottle, Lothars. 11, 12 minutes in. Holy crap. They scout out the Sand King. They've got Sentry Wards. In comes Crystal Maiden. And they're going to pick up a kill on Don at the top lane. Sand King goes down. And that's what SVR need. They are falling behind in terms of this DK's farm. If this everyone was as found as this DK, this game would have been over five minutes ago. But DK is the only one on the skirt side with this, this amount of farm. Darks is getting there. He's starting to build up his Sol Ring. Has he actually completed it? Looks like he does. Sol Ring and Bottle coming out. So he's even despite doing this Bottle Crowing, he's uh, going to go for the Sol Ring as well, deciding the Bottle not giving him enough mana on its own. And we'll see how he does adjust with this build. Bottom lane. They're going in. They want Rubik. And they will have Rubik. DK. Lothar's stun. Initiation. Dead Rubik. And that's the power of the Lothar's. You can use it to get the initiation they need. And that was a very, very easy kill. A very easy initiation. And now this bottom T1 tower. Probably going to go down. DK pops the ultimate. Still just a level 1 ultimate. But that's the level you want it on if you're pushing down those towers. You don't want to get that second point. Because you lose the corrosive attack. And this second tier 2 tower. Probably going to go down. TP coming in from CM. They're going to need at least a couple more TPs if they want to defend this. And DK still chipping away at it. They could have it, but CM gets found by Shadow Demon. And here comes Dark Seer. Uh-oh. CM in all kinds of trouble. Sand King as well. This will be the end of CM. Barristrak not going to land, but not going to matter. As Sand King does not really contribute anything at all. I don't Actually, he did get an assist somehow. Meanwhile, DK getting a tier 1 tower. And that's 1,200 gold on him. I've got to worry. Can they actually beat Firebus? on the DK. Forget Morphling as a carry. This is going to be all about the DK, who is just getting ridiculously out of control. Lifesteal with Armlet and Treads, though, so he's got decent farm, and Lifesteal's a nice hero to have against DK. The tanky hero, he's good against tanks because of his passive. It does bonus damage and steals more HP based on the HP of the unit you're attacking. So, uh, as far as tanks go, like Lifesteal does fairly well. And we're going to see Templar Assassin as well used as a semi-counter there. He's got treads up as well as a DD root bottle. He's almost got enough gold for that blink dagger. So when he gets that blink, he can do some big damage. And that's the thing. DK, sure, he's got this massive farm. But Templar Assassin and Life Stealer, he can melt. That's minus armor and big right-click damage from two heroes. Templar Assassin and Nakes, they both hurt. And they both hurt 
a lot. So with the minus armor, they can really take down this DK with just those two heroes if he's not careful. He's going to have to use the Lothar's wisely. He's going to have to tank up. He's going to have to get some plus armor, plus HP later on to help tank him up. Although maybe first he will just go for some DPS and maybe a BKB. Something along those lines as we're going to see a gank coming at top. The nuke goes down. Which one are they going to go for? It is the Sanking. He gets instead up. He gets woven through. Woven. I guess that's the, uh, the past tense of wave. And uh, he does go down. And now Tempo Assassin with the DD Rune Pop looking to start pelting away at this tier 2 tower. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Lothar's DK. He's going to get an initiation. Oh, he doesn't get the stun. Oh. Bit of a misclick, maybe. But now Shadow Demon coming in looking for the lifestealer. Lifestealer gets purged up. DK going to have a stun, I believe. He's probably going to throw that in a second. He does invest into a creep. He wants to come out, though. One more right click. Oh, that was close. He almost got the Shadow Demon there. He was one right click away from it. The infest damage adding to that, and Shadow Demon going to TP his way home. Nice bit of play there. Nice little gank there. Nakes almost made sure he got he got the kill, though. Top lane. They didn't manage to get the T2 tower. They just got down to about half HP. And it looks like, no, Tempo Assassin is still up there. 2.1k gold. Just 10 gold away from that Blink Dagger. Oh, Sanky. In a lot of trouble. And Pet is going to finish off the kill. Now Dark Team needs to be careful. The surge is up. It looks like it's a level 2, level 3 surge. It lasted a good while. And that's going to help make sure he can escape any aggression, any pressure. As uh, any max. They're down 6 kills, kills to 3. But the DK, with this amount of farm, you've got to say, can they do anything? And it looks like they may be able to do so. But top lane. Darkseen needs to get away. He's going in though. He's decided, okay, let's kill this enchantress. But here comes Templar Assassin. Purge goes down as well. This will be the end of Shadow Demon. Looks like he does drop an uh, disruption on an enemy here. He maybe wants to use it on himself. And now Darkseen. Surge has to try to look for an escape. He's chasing though. And it's because DK is here. DK going to look for an opening. And it's going to come on Templar Assassin. The Iron Shell with the full force up. Actually going to try to save the Templar Assassin. Not going to be enough. Wave through. And it's by a bus. The DK picking up another kill. He's got 1,200 gold. He's got a Mithril Hammer. He is having a massive impact on this game, as we are going to see. See him in Enchantress. Just look to get the hell out of there. Ogre Axe picked up for the Enchantress. Either BKB, probably just an Aghanim Scepter going to be being built there. Nakes, where are you going? Where's your Mask of Madness and Basher? We've seen it in the past. He goes for the Mask of Madness and then goes for the Basher. And I feel that's a good build to go against the DK. It will stun him down for a bit longer, and the Mask of Madness will allow Lifesteal to just steal more HP and just outlast the DK in these fights. Currently 0 and 1, but 105 creep kills. We're just 17 minutes in. Let's have a look at a few of these carries. So 105 on Lifestealer, Templar Assassin just 48, and forget Blink Dagger, he went for Force Staff. That's where that Force Staff came from on the Templar Assassin. I thought it came from a support hero like the Rubik, or the Solar Mid like a Rubik, but no, it was Templar Assassin not going for Blink. We'll see Arcane Boots, and it looks like building towards a mech on the Rubik. I like the mech choice. Nice little addition there. Smoke Gank coming from the Scourge team. They are looking around. They're looking for this Life Stealer, I imagine. Not going to find him at bottom or in the jungle, but they will find him at mid. And they're going to go on this. But this is a 3v4. There's only three Scourge heroes. I don't know if this is going to go their way. They need the DK. DK is at top. They're going to go in now. Rubik's been left alone. At just the right time, they will arrive. Sanking with a level 4 stun. Should be able to get there. But CM coming back in. There's your stun. TM has a frostbite. He uses it. And that's, CM, that's Sanking's opening to go, go for the epicenter. But he doesn't decide to do, do it. And it is going to be a 1 for 1 trade so far. Darkseer on the run. Now there will be a trap in a second. Or it will there. Four staff to chase. Darkseer. He's uh, not being slowed. He's got Vanguard and Hood. And meanwhile, top lane. DK. Another tower going his way. Bayabas. Wow. A lot of farm. A lot of farm indeed. And he's going to go lifesteal onto the onto the illusion. Just a replicate of the Morphling. And in fact, Enchantress can in fact steal those with the Enchant. That's one thing. It's good to have the Enchantress late game against the Morphling. You can steal the replicates. It's not something you have to worry about. He may think, oh, let's just replicate this lifesteal. He's got big items. Even if he's not in rage form, it's still a good idea. But no, nope, Enchantress can just steal them. As uh, it is going to be Mask of Madness. It's coming. Mask of Madness on the lifestealer. And we're going to see whether or not this Basher plus Mask of Madness combo again can do what it, what's needed. I feel it's strong. It works. Especially it goes through BKB for one thing. It's it's one. Of, I mean, it's, it's one of the few stuns. It's one of the few items you can buy that will go through BKB. 
you have to obviously be right clicking. It's a percent based thing. It's not all that reliable. But when you hit as fast as the Nikes does, it's pr pretty damn reliable. Mask of Madness, you've got Rage as well. That's going to become very, very reliable. He's now bought a gem. Well, he hasn't bought it. His teammates bought a gem. But Nix is going to be the one holding it. And this is going to be used to really shut down this DK. He has got the BKB now. He has got additional survivability. But that's something where they're going to go start, start a witch hunt. And the witch is going to be this DK. Bottom lane, though, being pressured. And Nate's not being there. There's a bit of a sign that he's on the hunt. He's looking for some opening. We'll see if one of these other heroes maybe decides to go try farm it up. But they've smoked up. They're going to go towards the mid lane. They see the BKB, so they know this is not going to be an easy kill. They're going to have to burst him down. The Telekinesis will provide that Mask of Madness. They've got the Shemi. He's going to go down. They get the Curry as well. SVRES, the Cambodians, the underdogs. Wow, they are playing well, and they are looking to cause a bit of a big upset here. Make their way to a grand finals. Would anyone have believed this? If I had said a month ago in my GSC IDC predictions, oh, I think SVRES are going to make the grand finals, I would have been laughed at. I would have been mocked. But here they are in July. Holy crap. Proving that it's not just the Philippines teams who can dominate the Dota scene and provide top quality results. It is other teams. Orange Esports have done it for Malaysia, and here SVR ES are looking to do it for Cambodia. We'll see what they are capable of doing. They're getting some de-warding happening. They're going to make sure that they're the ones with the map control. That's the beauty of this gem. They can get complete other map control. They're going to find a Morphling Replicate. Just take it out for good measure. Actually, no, they steal it. That's that's even better. That's I mean, Well, for one thing, it's just quicker than having to kill it, and they deny vision, and they can now use it. Send it off. Go do some scouting with it. And bad burn, you've got to feel, I mean, they're on the back foot. They have got a farmed up Morphling, 115 creep kills there for Chen. What else are they looking at? Tanking, nowhere near his blink. How much creeps do some of these other heroes have? 87 on Darks here. DK with 102. So they've got three very farmed heroes. All their three farmers are looking to be ridiculously farmed, especially the Morphling. 120. 102, and then about 90 on Darkseid. Yeah. So the central team, they're losing on farm, I want to say. Nakes is 123. He's actually 123. 81 on Rubik. And then where's their last hero? Wow, Sanj. Sanj? Okay. 74 on Templar Assassin. So they've only got one hero above the 100 mark. They've Whereas uh, the Scourge team have two. If Templar Assassin was a bit closer to... The, was sitting on 100, then it'd be even in terms of CS. But as kills go, it's SVR who are ahead. And they, they have greater map control. They've got strong item choices and items like this Lothar's are not going to be that effective as long as this gem is in the playing field. So we're seeing SVRES, the ones in control of this game and he's going to see a basher coming soon. There's your javelin. Next basher coming up soon guys. It's going to happen. And we'll have a quick save as well. Need pause? Maybe. Looks like they're okay. No need to wait. We're gonna go. T1 tower pressure. Can Pacific Emax defend this? I this isn't gonna be straightforward. This is not gonna be as easy as that easy. DK gets searched in, he gets to sound the next. Nakes has already popped his uh, armlet though, so he's got plenty of HP. He's uh, gonna think about going in. He hasn't got his basher yet, but those big impetus one hits the sand king, forces a sandstorm, purge on the next. He infests into enchantress. That probably dodges the purge damage, I wanna say. And he's gonna get immediately leaves. He takes big damage though, the soul catcher amplifying any, then he just goes right clicking away on DK, healing himself up. They take out Don. Impetus is now start flying in. Darkseer takes one, but he's got plenty of survivability. Nate's still alive. He TP's home though, and he has to because look at this top lane. Look at Chen. He's going top. He's going for a Rax. Where did this come from? Tier 3 towers, potential Rax from Morphling. Oh my gosh, he's gonna have to wave his way out, but he got this top Rax down to half HP. Morphling, where the hell were you that whole time? Eh? Oh, that's where he was, but how the hell did he manage to do that? I don't even know. Morphling waves back in. He takes out the Nakes. Nakes is dead. I don't even think he has buyback. Gem gets picked up as well. He steals the gem. He leaves. He gets out. He's on the run now. He gets stunned. He gets frothed in. Impetus is coming down. He's going to wave to the high ground, and he may be okay. Four stuff. He's going to get thrown back down to the low ground. Templar Assassin is there waiting. He's out of mana. It looks like he's going to drop the gem even when he's just found it now. Morphling is going to drop, but he picks up the kill. And this Siege Grip still hitting this Rax, but it looks like he will get away. Morphling. Big plays, but he does go down.
And now we can have a save. Oh man. SVRES pulling a hell of a game against the returning champions, but the returning champions, they're not going to go down fighting. Darkseer and DK looking to get up some big items as well. No pipe finish for the Darkseer man. Think of the team, think of the team, get the pipe. He's picked up a Vitality Booster, going to start building a heart, I imagine. I mean, he's already got the Vanguard. Not much else he can do unless he wants to get a full Bloodstone, but Bloodstone on Darkseer wouldn't be what I'd expect at this point. Rubik, he's finished his mech. There's some additional survivability, and the, the, the Sentinel team, they need to make sure they keep this top lane push. Otherwise, this, if they go for a push at bottom or mid, this Rax could get ninja by that Morphling. Morphling is trading well so far, and we're going to see DK, level 13. He's put a second point in his ultimate, not often what you always do, but he's got a lot of farm, and the AoE attack with his attack speed, with this damage, is actually probably going to be worthwhile compared to the poison attack. The poison attack, if you're under farmed, is slightly better because it gives you some DPS, but having the AoE will help him out. And now we're going to see Sentinel Team also farming their own ancient. Templar Assassin getting close to a Desolator, possibly the BKB, depending which route he wants to go. I feel he just wants to Desolator, do as much damage as possible. Tear apart this DK. 1700 gold. He's about equal distance away from both the uh, BKB as well as the Desolator. Both cost similar amounts. That's something I never really considered. Can, total cost 4.1. BK is, I believe, 3.9. Yeah, BKB is 200 gold cheaper. So he's really close to both those two items. As I will see which one he wants to go for. DK, 850 gold. Is he buying up pieces yet? Has he got his Assault Crest coming? Doesn't look like it does. There's a bottle being carried out, but no, DK still a bit of way to go for the Assault Caress. And that's the other hero we have to keep an eye on, Morphling. Lincoln's is up, Ghost Scepter is up, and guys, you know what that means? We're going to be seeing an Ethereal Blade once again. Well, once, not once, not necessarily once again, but as per, as per somewhat usual, Morphling Ethereal Blade, the Shotgun Morph, and I feel that is what this Morphling needs to get against this matchup. He can get additional right, he, the right click damage can come from DK even. They just want the Ethereal Blade up, and uh-oh. They sniff out something is up, and it is Roshan. They're going to walk right into a Sentry Ward. Have they been spotted yet? It do doesn't look like they have. He's got his Javelin. He hasn't got his Basher, but Darkseer can get focused down right off the bat. Can he get off the wall? It doesn't look like he will. Epi said it comes in. Roshan actually gets the kill. Not that it matters. The important thing is that he went down. They pick up the Sand King. Four stuff out. Coming from Rubik. Has he got a Telekinesis? BKB gets popped. DK, one more right click. Breath of Fire. Can he land it? He's going to get the right click, though. He doesn't need the Breath of Fire. Lothar's out. Have they got the gem back? They should have. I'm not sure who's actually picked up the gem. They definitely uh, recovered it from the Morphling. But maybe Morphling actually killed the gem before he died? If Morphling killed that gem before he died, that would have been absolutely incredible. I can't believe if he did. I didn't actually notice him do it if he did back then, but it looks like he may have actually killed the gem before he died, because I don't see the gem anywhere on this Sentinel team. None of these heroes with a gem. He destroyed the gem. Oh my god, I didn't even notice. And uh, now DK. Going to continue to farm, as it is now an Aegis picked up over on... Where is this Aegis? Where is the Aegis? Why aren't I focusing? Who picks up Aegises and stuff like that? This is important information, guys. I should probably actually watch these kind of things. Did a oh my god! I'm gonna be I'm gonna be so confused. Did, they, did whoever picked up Aegis actually die? I feel incompetent at, the, at moments like this. All right, Roshan's still up. Roshan's still up. I was looking for the big red dot on the map, but there's no big red dot on the mini-map because they have vision of him. That's going to explain that. So we've got a purge down on the crystal main. They're looking for the CM here. Dark's here. Going to uh, find himself picking up that kill there. And now Chen the Morphling with the wave on in. 2.6k gold. He's getting very close to the Ethereal Blade. Surge on the Dragonite. Going to set for stun. And this could be the end of Enchantress. Defensive force stuff coming with the help of the Templar Assassin. DK needs to get out. He's getting bashed. The BKB will not help you there. Bash is now up on Life Stealer. He's got the Mask of Mass with an armor. And that hurts. DK forced to go on the back, but he's getting slowed as well. Pops the Lothar's Edge. Have they got sentries? Disruption on the lifesteal. Going to slow down his advances. He pops the Rage, and he's going to try to go in. But SVRS, they picked up the Morphling. How did they even kill the Morphling? 
They somehow managed to do so, and DK getting first down. One more right click is needed. He gets away. No, he doesn't. The fade bolt comes in at the last second, and SVRES not losing any casualties. Holy crap! They are somehow staying alive. Lifestealer going in. I think they want Roche. They're going for Roshan. They've taken out the DK. They've taken out the Morphling. The two big heroes. And now we're going to have... A Roshan attempt. Is there any firepower left for Pacific Imex to stop this? Doesn't look like there is. I mean, Shadow Demon from the high ground can scout. Epicenter's only level 1. I, he's going to go for it. He's going to go right away. Doesn't even think of Fade Bolt. Oh my gosh. Fade Bolt from the low ground. Rubik. Oh. He was going for the Epicenter blink. The trap. The trap scouted them out. And Rubik was in raid to the Fade Bolt. What a play. And now it looks like we may see some more casualties. There's a Surge. And SK actually completely whiffs his Barrow Strike. Luckily the Surge did keep the Shadow Demon alive. One Impetus was there. There wasn't any additional ones. Oh my gosh. He couldn't blink in following the Epicenter. And now it's going to be SVRES with the Aegis in their hands. Probably on that Life Sealer. Picked up by him. 800 gold on top of that. Doesn't have a TP as a result, but still, he's got his big three items. The Basher, the Armlet, the Mask of Madness. That's what he wants. Last time he went for the Heart of Tarask following this. We'll see if he does something similar. Could always go for some more damage. Could go for an Assault Crest if he wants additional attack speed to get even more bashes. Plenty of options. The world is his oyster. And we're going to see whether or not SVR have it in them to cause one of the biggest upsets this month at GSD. I mean, they do well in their group stage. Once again, I mean, it's become sort of normal to cause some upsets, but last month they didn't do well come playoff time. They lost to teams that were considered to be the top teams, and this is a returning champion, so it doesn't get any stronger than this, really. Uh, it is a team who have been playing so damn well ever since they came in. They didn't actually participate in the first few months, but since participating, I believe, the last two months, uh, they yeah, they last month they were the champions. The month before that, I think, they made it to the place but didn't get through. Um, I think this is only their third. It's either their third or fourth GST. They've missed out on at least two months worth of it. Anyways, we're going to see whether or not they will be defeated here by an SVR ES team who are a massive, massive underdogs. A big dark horse this tournament as it is going to be a push coming down the middle lane. The tier 2 tower may drop. Morphling has no intent on defending. DK has no intent on defending. They want to start pressuring this top lane again. I mean, that rack is completely bare. It's going to force SVRS to take a tower, now back off. Which is uh, okay for them. I mean, they're just going to keep on farming. They can get their next big items up. DK now level 16. Does have that Ice Dragon up, so that's going to be big for him. Have a quick save. Oh, man. And SVR are the ones definitely in control of this match. I have to agree. They've got such great late game potential. They've got great mid game potential now. They've got the item advantage. They've got the level advantage. And they have got the map greater map control as well. I mean, look at this. Heaven's Halberd for Enchantress. This is not an item I would have expected picked up on Enchantress typically. But it's a, not, it's a good pickup. Enchantress is really squishy. Has terrible strength gain. Sanjin Yasha not only... Gives her plus HP plus strength, but you get evasion and a disarm. I really like this item choice on Enchantress. I've never actually considered it as an item choice, but it makes so much sense on an Enchantress. It's such a clever item to get. As we're going to see the other item progression here. Ultimate all picked up by the Rubik. Next, seeing on 1500 gold himself. Hasn't picked up too much more. Daxi, I mean, Sorbus is being made, so he is going for a Bloodstone. I'm not too sure about this. I feel like his team could benefit from a pipe, even if there isn't massive magic AoE damage. I mean, just the Fade Bolt, Crystal Maiden Frost, and over. That's enough. I mean, that justifies a pipe. It's not like it's a massive extra gold. It's 1,500 gold. He already bought the Hood. It's just another 1,500 gold to get that pipe. So, uh, deciding against it, though. Deciding they don't need it. I mean, most it, there is a lot of physical damage. You're looking at Tempo Assassin and Nakes, but he did manage to buy that hood, so by this point he should as well. He may as well be getting it. All right, we're gonna see Tempo Assassin and Nakes leading the charge at the middle lane with the Basher, 
with the armlet, Mask of Madness and Treads. Whereas DK at bottom, morphing at top. This is once again going to force SVRES back. They've got to defend this top racks. Unless they really want to go for a trade. But they're not really in a position where they want to trade. They want to just get back. And next, can he even get back? He's been purged up. He's got some back. We're going to see a telekinesis used on the replicate. TP's back at the top lane. Morphling going to be forced home. Want me to wave out. He's got his ethereal blade though. We'll see how that pans out for him. Can he find the opening he's after? He's morphing to agility. He's looking for it. He's going to wave on in. Refract. You need to use that refract. It goes on the Enchantress. There's not enough damage. Morphing now. Needs to get out. He toes for the TP. Is there enough right-click damage? No, there's not. He gets out. Meanwhile, mid lane. CM goes down. Looks like it's the Shadow Demon who picks up an easy kill on the Crystal Maiden. With uh, Nakes TPing bottom and a couple of heroes TPing top. Left the uh, Crystal Maiden alone at mid and they did manage to get the kill. What will be coming next from the Life Slayer? He can just finish off his Abyssal Blade. Or he may just want to get the Heart of Tarask or his next big item up. I think yet last time they did this against MSI. And I think he went for a Heart at this point and then got the Abyssal Blade after the Heart. He just wants the Bash mostly for now. The right click Bash. And then the Heart Survivability is what he wants to go for as his next big item. If he's going to go for a similar thing here. As we will see DK. Look at this farm. BKB, Assault Crest, Lothar's 2k gold on top of it. So he is not too shabby himself. If anything, he's out farming the life stealer as far as big items go. Assault Crest, BKB. I mean, that BKB and BKB and Lothar's both sitting around the sort of 3.5k gold market as far as cost wise. You've got the Assault Crest, which is a very expensive item. Life stealer, I mean, armlet's fairly cheap. Bash is fairly cheap. So is Mask of Madness. These are all not super big tier 4 items. These are sort of your tier 3 items. Even the tier 2 item, your Mask of Madness. Back when we had your four shops, your tier one, two, three, four, and everything was ordered by price. Now things are ordered by type. You've got your similar item classes together. Your da your damage dealing weapons, your defensive weapons, your caster weapons. And we'll see where Nax wants to go. Enchantress. Cloak being picked up now. We're going to negate some of that magic damage. Deciding, no deciding that no one can right click her down. And with a Heaven Talbot. As well as the level 4 passive. I've got to agree there. Right clicking this enchantress down is not going to be easy. You've got, you slow their attack speed. You evade their hits. And you've also got the plus HP. So I feel that the magic resistance is the way to go. And uh oh. Who is this? Shadow Demon getting caught completely out of position. It looks like they were looking for a kill here. With the DK ultimate. DK still sitting on just regular boots in fact. Something out of the ordinary. Lifestealer. His TP gets cancelled. I'm tanking. You got to run son. You got to run. Lifesteal is going to go looking for you. Slowed. He's got the sandstorm. He may want to just pop that here. No sentry wards as of yet. As we'll see Lifesteal back off. He's taking a lot of damage. One blink stun could be the end of him. Waveform. Oh, he, he pops his armlet just in time. He gets frostbitten up. The, oh, the ethereal blade finishes him off. That was the Aegis though. And he did, was at the cost of a sand king. And Morphling may go down. He's trying to wave. TP. Is there a stun? He's in the trees. Great decision there to start casting the TP mid waveform, although it does reveal what he's doing, but still, nonetheless, he gets away. He took out the Aegis on Knights. It came at the cost of a Sand King, but I think that's an okay trade. It's a trade, I mean, it's not the best trade, but it's a trade they almost just have to make at this point, because Aegis on negative, they're in a position where it's a 5v5 fight around the base of Pacific Emacs, and it makes his two lives, well, they're going to lose that fight. But if they can just take his Aegis like that, one for one traded, then they're going to be okay. Because it's not like Nakes can use the Aegis. He, he basically used it to get a kill on the Sand King. Whereas if he was in the enemy base, he'd be maybe getting a Rax out of something. So I think it's a good trade. Just get rid of the Aegis. The problem is going to be Roshan will be up in the next three or four minutes. So maybe we'll see the Sentinel team looking to get it again. And it's Bloodstone. Finished on Darks. He's got 2k gold on top of that. So he's got this hood, but he's not really turning into a pipe. He doesn't show any intent to do so either. He wants to get some plus armor. This is where he wants to go for a Shiver's Guard almost. I don't think this would... I mean, if he doesn't want magic, may as well, magic resistance, he may as well sell it and just pick up a Shiver's Guard. Morphling, Ethereal Blade, Lincoln's. This looks like a Scardi or possibly just a Mantisal is going to be coming up next. So Pacific Emacs, despite not being in the best position because of this next, they're actually looking okay because of the farm on their Morphling. Not to mention the farm on the DK. They've got two ridiculously farmed heroes. Darkseer as well. I mean, this is three ridiculously farmed heroes. I mean, between Darkseer, DK, and Morphling, there is just so much farm. 236, 167, and 186. Holy crap, there's a lot of farm there. 
Nakes just with 200, and then the rest of the Sentinel team. 133 on Rubik. Templar Assassin, 134. But still, it's the Scourge team leading the way in terms of creep kills. And so we'll see a bit of a standoff at the moment. Both teams looking for the opening, looking for a possibility to get a few kills and then push out the waves. And right now, it's SVR who are struggling to push out the waves. They've got the life stealer. They haven't got great pushing heroes. It's the Scourge team. Pacific, who have plenty of mobility. The Morphling, who can wave around. He's got the ranged attack. He's just got the superior split push, but split pushing. Same goes for DK. He's got the Lothas as an escape. He can just go split push. Whereas Nakes, he can get ganked if he's just trying to push on his own. And he doesn't push waves all that quickly compared to a DK. Even a Morphling, both with AoE spells. DK with an AoE last hit in ulti form. And same goes for the... Well, not some, same goes for Morphling. What I'm talking about. And the same doesn't apply for the Morphling, but Morphling. Just with the waveform for the AoE there, there's just so much that they can use. And it's Emacs. Bad burn. We're just pressuring these lanes. All three lanes constantly pressuring towards the SVR base. SVR are holding fine. They're not in too much danger as of yet, but just a matter of time until we see an initiation. Maybe out of the DK. His ultimate, though, about to wear off. Level 3 ultimate. Vacuum. Tanking stun does land. DK gonna have a follow-up stun. Templar Assassin goes in. There's your wall. DK gets pulled to the other side. DK gets bashed. He pops the BKB, but he gets bashed. Nakes immediately TPing top because his morphing is going in. Going for the racks. Nakes didn't even bother finishing off the DK. DK fires back. Is this racks gonna go down? The morphling, the replicate, the illusion, the replicate. It's gonna get a racks. It's not gonna get a racks. It gets stolen. It gets hexed. It disappears. I don't know what happened, but the racks, 30 HP. Someone click this racks. Where's this illusion? Send your wall replica. There we go. He's sending it. It's going to die though. The tower finishes it off. The wall, it wasn't expiring. That next illusion, if it had just been micro, would have been a Rax. SVRE, yes. They hold on to it. Next immediate really reacting. The immediate TP saves his top Rax. He does go down at, for it, but they keep the Rax. Oh, oh, oh. oh man. Oh man, oh man. And this is a clever trick. This Morphling trick, what they're doing is disruption onto the Morphling and then he replicates his illusion. The only reason he can replicate his illusion is because of the disruption. If you, if it wasn't a disruption, he can't replicate his own illusion, but the, the illusion belonged to the Shadow Demon, which means he can get replicates of himself. They made it so you couldn't get replicates of yourself, but because it's not, it's not technically his own illusion. It's an illusion that belongs to the Shadow Demon, so it's possible to get the it's possible to replicate it. And we're gonna see a Roshan attempt now. Templar Assassin is gonna be the one getting the ages, it's not gonna go to the next. And that's if they actually get it. There's vision. It's coming from this crow by the looks of things. And Templar Assassin is there the ability to take it. He's getting low. And here comes the counter gang. This is looking good for Bad, but if they can get here in time, Templar Assassin gonna have to back off. The heal's coming from Enchantress, and this could be a Roche steal. They're gonna have to back off here. Rubik. The slow's coming in. The stun from Telekinesis. Nex is backed up. And here comes a Dark Sea wall, but it doesn't actually make any illusions. Nex is going to walk into it. SK, Epicenter. He doesn't do a whole lot of damage with it, though. They take out one. They take out B. Morphling, more importantly, comes in, takes out the Nex. The big shotgun. That is the kill they needed. And that is the play they needed from the Morphling. Chen making the kills happen when they're needed. And there we go. DK, Bayabas, Guava Man takes out a third kill and it's going to be an Aegis going the way of Pacific Emacs. What a play, what a counter. With Nakes dead, they just couldn't kill Roshan fast enough. There was enough time for Badburn to come in, get the counter happening, and they do manage to get their hands onto Roshan. It's going to be an Aegis going the way of the DK. He's got his life still up as well now. 2k gold as well. What massive farm. Ay ay ay. We'll have a save. We'll have a save. The Guava. Making it... Making it happen when it counts. Top lane Morphling's only on 600 gold. Has he bought pieces towards his Mantisal? Yes, he does. Mantisal is coming out. And that's going to be... Disruption, Replicate, Mantisal. That's a lot of Morphling illusions. He can replicate his own Disruption illusion. He can pop a mantle. So there's four Morphlings alone. And then not to mention, you have a temporary additional two from the Disruption, which lasts sort of seven or eight seconds. So there's there's going to be six Morphlings for a period of time, if he's going to be, replicate himself. Six Morphlings. One being real, five being illusions. That's a lot of Morphlings to deal with. 
whole lot of morphin. And we're gonna see whether or not SVR ES have it in to hold. They need to get that, that enchantress. I mean, enchantress can only steal one of those illusions. You want to steal the replicate. The replicate is the one that hurts. It's the tankiest. The manta illusions. They take more damage. They're squishy. And there we go. Replicate is there. It's up of the morphling. Enchantress wants to steal this. Needs to steal this soon. It's going to be coming in soon. It's going to be pretty much set up for a pretty easy steal for the enchantress. If it is no longer on cooldown. And there we go. He steals it. Nice little pickup. Gets disrupted though. And uh, doesn't matter too much. Brings it back. So that's what Enchantress needs to make sure happens every fight. Steal the replicate. Figure out which one it is. Save the enchantress. It's a great slow to have, but if you can steal the replicate, it's a much better tool. As we do see DK at bottom lane getting scouted out. They want to kill this DK. They'd love to go on him, but he's got an Aegis, and by the time they take him down, well, top racks, you've seen what happens the last few times, guys. It is likely to be taken out here, as we're going to see Morphling. Four illusions. Just send them all forward onto the racks. Why the hell not, guys? Look at this damage. Morphling, the illusions. How much Aggie has he got? Oh my god, this is going to be a Rax. They don't have a glyph. Rax goes down. Just two illusions. Half, the, I mean, it was half HP. There was plenty of HP on it, but it just went down. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Nex is going in on DK. DK will go down, but that's just an Aegis. And look how much damage this Nex is taking. Darks is looking for him. Is there a vacuum? Not going to come. And meanwhile, top lane. Godlike is the call. SVR, ES. It's B. It's, sorry, it's EE. -E. It's Templar Assassin picking up two kills. He takes out Don. He takes out the Sanking as well as the Shadow Demon. Just the support so far. DK and Darks here alive at bottom. Morphling alive at top. He's going to be pushing in, pressuring this range. Rax, it's just the split push. The split pressure becoming so much, so overwhelming. Darks here. Has he got an ultimate? Has he got a wall? It will be up. It's up not in 50 seconds. It's not up for a while. Meanwhile, Morphling sending in more illusions. Nakes has got his Reaver up, but his heart is still a bit of a way off. Pacific Emacs playing this so, so well. The split push, the split pressure. This does not look like a Filipino team. Not Nothing to do with the win. In fact, they're winning. In fact, Filipino teams regularly winning here. But just this play style, this is more what you see from the Chinese teams, from teams like Orange, from the European teams. This is a split, put, split push split pressure they're not being super aggressive they're just wearing down their opponents they're just wearing them down by just pressuring away at all three lanes keeping the i mean they're just keeping the split push going all three lanes are constantly being at these tier three towers i mean look at this mid lane tier three towers so low bottom lane's being chipped away at top lane's lost to melee racks it's just all over the place that pacific bad burn and looking to just pressure 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 and the svres despite being up 24 to 13 they are up on kills they are the ones who have, for a large part of this game, controlled it. But they just, Nakes, as strong a hero as he is, he's not good at dealing with this split push style. That's the thing. He can only be in one place at once. He, he's not very mobile. And it's heroes like DK who can just solely push bottom. Use the Lothars to escape. Morphling, who is mobile, who can push that top lane. And who has a ridiculous amount of farm. He's going to get replicated up. This mid tower likely to go down. We'll see the racks being focused down as well right after the tower goes down. Namei picks up that one. He picked up a kill as well. It's on the next. Next goes down. And now this is not looking good for SVRS. It's all up to Temple Assassin. Takes up the Sanking. Doing whatever right click damage as possible. DK, 150 HP. Templar Assassin just not having the damage needed. Buys back into the game. Rubik on the run. DK, so low. Where's the damage? Templar Assassin needs to go in. Needs to try to finish up the DK. Has a blink dagger now as well as the four stuff. Needs to blink in. Needs to take out this DK. Mid, Rax goes down. Pacific Emacs find themselves up two melee barracks. They're going to leave the range barracks standing. They're going to back off for now, although DK still ha looking to maybe chip away. To There's a sentry ward for SBR. They do a vision of the DK. Templar Assassin goes in, takes out one, takes out the Shadow Demon, looking for more. Needs to not get stunned up. One stun from the DK could be the end. That's also going to be the end. Four heroes down. SBR ES going to lose the range barracks. Going to call GG. Bravo. The Crystal Maiden. The Morphling right click damage, the DK right click damage, Pacific Emax, formerly Bad Burn, the returning champions have done it. They were behind. They looked out of this game. They looked like they did not have much of a hold on it, but what a fantastic game. SVRES, they couldn't pull through with the goods. They were in a good position. They were ahead. Cambodian team, SVRES. Wow, they were impressive, I have to say. SVRES. 
the team who most people tuning in, including myself, had never heard of until a month ago. They put up a hell of a fight, and they are going to be playing in the third place match. I, I hope to see them there. Hopefully, we do have time in our schedule to stream both the third place match as well as the grand finals. SVRES will be representing Cambodia once again in the, in the third place match. I'd love to see them in the grand finals, but they put up a hell of a fight. They put up a hell of a show. They won't be making their way into the grand finals this month round, but they'll be back next month, I'm sure, with the way they're playing. And this month, they're going to be playing in that third place match against the loser of Neo Lucian and Pacific Palette. Huge respect for these guys. Putting up a great fight and all of that, representing Cambodia. We're going to see Pacific Bad Burn for the second time in two months in the grand finals. Possible rematch with IZone. Will IZone, IZone find themselves in a fourth grand final this month around. Will they break their curse? Will they manage to finally win one? We're going to have to wait and see, guys. I'm going to answer all those questions in the next couple of hours. Who's going to be getting that third place prize? Who's going to be your champions this month around? GESC IDC July, guys. All the live action. I am GGNet Gods, your commentator for the English broadcast of the GESC IDC. We're going to be back soon, guys.